Hi everyone, welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. Tonight we're going to have a little bit of a tutorial. I'm going to show you my method that I use for removing chips from boards like this. This is a Commodore 64 and it's very common that you might have to remove a chip as a repair and it's easy if you don't do it right that you're going to lift traces and cause some damage to the board. So I'm going to show you my method that I've come up with that works for me really well. And I know that anytime we talk about soldering on a video, it's very contentious and I'll probably get lots of angry comments that I'm doing it wrong. But this is my method that works well for me. If you're looking for tips on how to do this, I'm hoping that my method might help you remove a chip from your board easily, quickly, without causing any damage. Let's take a look at what tools I'm going to use to do this. So the first thing I use is a desoldering iron. These types of things have a regular soldering iron here, which on this unit is temperature adjustable, and there's a vacuum pump inside. Anytime you remove solder from a board, it goes into this little plastic canister here, and that's generally how these work. This unit, which is the S993A, I got off eBay over two years ago. It was a little over $100, so it wasn't cheap, but it wasn't super expensive. Proper, good quality desoldering irons can cost quite a bit more. There are some better units that some of the other YouTubers are using, which may offer better results. But this is the one I have, and I'm going to show you how I use this. The biggest issue with this unit is because the vacuum pump is inside here, there isn't a lot of suction on this. And it just doesn't do a good job of getting rid of all the solder. You might have better luck with the units where there's an external pump, with temperature controls, because those use a larger vacuum pump and maybe work better. I unfortunately don't have experience with those, so all I can speak to is this one. So the nice thing about this unit is it came with this nice chunky stand and it did come with an assortment of tips. So if you're going to be removing chips from a board, you want to figure out which tip is going to work, work best. This one, as you can see, is quite large and there's really no way that that's going to work well on this Commodore 64, not on these dips here. So the one I'm going to use is the one that's already installed on here. I think it's about a one millimeter unit and it fits nicely over the pin and it puts the heat right onto the pad. Other things I'm going to use during this process is some 91% isopropyl alcohol with some Q-tips or cotton swabs. I use this just to clean up the board after I'm done. I use fresh solder to put onto the board as I'm trying to desolder that puts a nice fresh coating. I'll show you more about that in a second. A chip puller is gonna help. And I have a little pick here. What I use this for is helping lift the chips up as I'm removing them, which I'll get to my technique in a second. And I have a little roll of electrical tape. This is simply here to prop up the board. I put it on the underside and it just keeps the heat from getting down onto my rubber mat. The last tool I'm gonna to be using is my hot air rework station. This one is from China, eBay actually, and it's very inexpensive, SMD Rework 858. Has the analog knobs of the temperature control and it has an airflow control. And the hot air comes out of this here. The little fan motor is all integrated. It's very inexpensive. I think this was about $40 shipped to me. So I use something like this and I'll show you how I do it in a second. So the board we're gonna be experimenting on tonight is this Commodore 64 main board. It has a fault on it, so I've already removed some of the chips and I'm gonna end up removing one of these 40 pin dips here and one of the RAM chips to kind of give you an example of how to take those out. I have always found that 40 pin chips are pretty darn hard to remove. So my method works quite well for me and hopefully it helps you as well. All right, let's get right to it. This is the chip I'm gonna be removing from the board. It's the MOS 6510 or the 6502 type CPU that's on the Commodore 64. Now to get this chip off, we're gonna flip the board over. So right away, since the back is a sea of green, I like to take a Sharpie and draw an X in the middle of the chip that I'm going to be removing. That way I don't accidentally remove adjacent pins. Next up, we're going to take my desoldering iron and I'm going to set it for 350 degrees. That's what I typically use. I don't know how accurate this is. I find if you're going to do large ground planes, you definitely need more heat. But for thin traces on a dip board like this, single layer board or double layer, you're going to need as low a temperature as you can go. Well, at least as this goes, so 350. Higher temperatures risk damaging the board. Even this temperature is a little high. I would rather do it around 320 if I could, but I can't go any lower than that. All right, so my technique is to take the tip of the soldering, desoldering iron and I put it on the side of the pin and I take fresh solder and I melt it. And then once it's melted, I put it over the pin and I suck it out. So here we go. Ah. 
Well, that was a mistake. So let's try again. Put it over. And you move it around quickly. Just loosen that pin up. And you suck the solder out. You don't want to hold it on too long, otherwise it will damage the board, at least this type. This vibrates a lot while you're desoldering because of the pump that's in there, and it kind of scrapes up the board. So I like to go as quickly as possible. Sometimes you got to clean the tip of the iron off. It starts to get a little crusty with a lot of solder. So just have a little bit of that steel wool stuff. Clean it off. Sometimes you have a pin like this one, which has a long, thick ground, and that will wick away the heat. So you will have to kind of hold it longer. But there we go. Just holding it on the side with the fresh solder kind of transfers the heat in there, gets it melted, and then you can suck it right out. Clean the tip off. All right, so now it's time just to kind of quickly inspect, make sure that you didn't miss any holes, that everything looks good. All of the solder is removed, at least from this side of the board. It looks pretty good. Now we flip the board over and we're gonna attack the other side. All right, so it looks like a good amount of the solder has been removed from the top side of the board too. But I can see a couple spots, like right there, that pin as well and one on the other side where it's still sort of remelted. And what happens is because my desoldering iron doesn't have enough suction, is when the solder is melted, it doesn't always clean out the hole completely. And if you just try to pry this chip up right now, it will rip the traces up, guaranteed. So this is where I bring in the hot air to get this chip out nice and easily without any damage. First, I take my little roll of electrical tape and I prop the board up. And again, I do this because I don't want the heat from the pins to transfer down into my mat. I don't have a very good mat underneath here and it will melt. I have my hot air gun here. I have it set for about 360 degrees Celsius and I have the airflow maxed out all the way to number eight. And this heats up very, very quickly. I have the smallest nozzle on here. There are various sizes, so the thinnest one, so it's the most directed air. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little pick here and we're gonna get this just under the chip so I can lever it out. But right now I can tell the chip is stuck in there. So I'm not gonna apply any pressure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply heat around the chip. In fact, there's a capacitor here. I can't really move it out of the way. So it's just gonna have to survive. So I know that there's a couple spots on this side that are stuck. And you just gently lift the chip. 
And look at that, it's coming right out already. So you kind of hook it on underneath the chip. There. So right there. I'm going to go from this side as well. There we go. So it's just hanging on by that one pin. There we go, it's out. So at this point, it's probably hot to touch, but I can just grab it. Ooh, it's hot, yeah. <laughs> Here's the chip. It is hot, but it's not too hot to hold because most of the heat I was directing towards the legs. So this doesn't seem to damage these chips and it gets them out really easily. Now, when we look at the traces, nothing was lifted, nothing was damaged, everything looks good. This one pin here, which looks like it has a rather thick trace, probably it's a power pin for the 6510. Uh, so it didn't melt all the solder on the top. So we're gonna use the desoldering iron and just we're gonna go over that hole again. The rest of the holes look good. If you see any that are kind of clogged up, you just wanna kind of go over them again on the backside with the desoldering iron. So let's just quickly do that. I can tell it's this pin right here with this little via right there next to it. That's the one that's clogged up. And it looks like it's clear from this side of the board, but I absolutely know it's not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take the solder and I'm gonna apply this sideways onto here, heat up the pad, apply some fresh solder onto it like there. Now let's check the other side and it should be nice and clear. Yep, that was it. That was the one right there which is with this thick, thick trace. That was the one that was clogged up and it's nice and clear. So all of these look really good now. So next, I take one of these cotton swabs and I apply a little bit of 90 or 91% isopropyl alcohol. And we're just gonna kind of clean this up. Nothing's really on this side of the board. Looks pretty good because all the uh, extra flux and everything was on this side here. So we're just gonna go over this and get that off, make this look a little better. Also, we can take the X off while we're at it. So there we go. This 40 pin dip came out with very little drama. And for me, the trick is hot air. That does the trick at releasing those few stuck pins without forcing it and without lifting the traces. All right, just for fun, let's remove this RAM chip right here. There's nothing wrong with it, but let's just take it out and I'll show you how much easier it is to even get these out. All right, so this is the chip we're gonna do. And remember, I use the Sharpie and just mark it so I won't make any mistakes. And let's just get this out. All right, rookie mistake. So what I did is I removed a solder from this side, the right side of this chip, and the left side of this chip. So I didn't even put my Sharpie mark in the right spot. So trap for young player, and look, I did it as well, is I put it in the wrong spot. So I really wanna get this chip here off. So let's just do those pins as well. So yeah, this black mark should have been here where these two traces are. That's the row of pins we're going to remove. And the last thick one. There we go. <laughs> can't believe I put the mark in the wrong spot. 
All right, so that's the chip, and now I can see that it's clear of solder on both sides. But just like the 40 pin dip, this is still stuck in here. So we got to use the heat gun. I'm going to prop the board up. I'm just going to give it a little heat, and because it's so small, this is much easier. Well, usually it is. Yeah, that thigh popped right out. There we go, right out of there. And there's the chip, came out. No fuss, no muss. I would easily be able to put a socket on there right now, or if I wanted to re could put a chip straight back in the board, no problem. Let's just clean that up, get the uh, flux off it. And if you make a mistake and you put, you desolder half of another chip, don't forget to resolder that chip together before you try using the board or you're gonna have an issue. All right, let's clean this up. Everything looks really nice and clean under here. And just to fix my mistake, I'm gonna, I'm gonna resolder those pins there. Well, here's a test Commodore 64 that I have, and I wanna see if the CPU I just removed actually works in here. So let's turn this on, make sure it's working first. Thumbs up, I got the regular Commodore 64 startup screen. This is the CPU right here, it has two heat sinks. Here's the CPU I removed from that board. And I did spend just a little bit of time cleaning up the pins. I just used my soldering iron and kind of wiped all the slag off of those. So they're nice and smooth now, so they should go into the socket without an issue. Let's pull this chip out and put that one in and see if this one is working. Okay, there's the old chip out. This is the chip we just removed, which if it works, it's gonna be a spare part for me. Just line this up. There we go. Power. Hey, it's functional. That's awesome. Well, there you have it. I hope you found that helpful in some way. I am sure there's going to be a lot of people who have a lot of things to say about how I did it right, did it wrong, whatever. But feel free to put those in the comment section below. I'm always looking for tips. But my method of using the desoldering iron, even though it's a crappy one, and the hot air works every time. It's just so easy to remove chips from boards without causing any damage. And I'm not spending a ton of money in the process either. Thumbs up if you like this. Thumbs down if you hated it. Subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.